Um, I suppose I, I'd start to start it all off I'll with. I'll, um, I'll leave you, Frank. <laughs> I mean, obviously, um, you know, the building is is very much a, a featured building. It's won many, many awards. It's it's won the um, the awards for the, um, the, the 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 city councils and the council councils all over the all the top awards. It also got a national trust award in England. Um, it shortlisted for the Structures International. It uh, got down to the last four in our category, which was which was quite great, and we had a good night and a celebration. And it also just recently was um, I didn't realise it until recently. Uh, Mys uh, van der uh, van der Rohe, Rohe, um, it, it was shortlisted for that. Now that is a serious thing. It got down to the last four or five. But having on that, you know. I, I didn't know who I was going to talk to tonight, but I know I'm talking to all engineers, so there's a communication, we'll talk engineering, and I, I didn't know which way to slant the thing. But it is very much an architectural building, and it, um, for me, um, it was interesting enough that I've had my first experience um, when I worked on another building, which I'm going to start with, because the whole thing is integrated, and, and it, it has a rationale of where I'm coming from. And ideas and concepts, and where it's not necessarily the engineer, the architect has a concept of where it's, where what he's going to do. But he, he has a initially he, he has a briefing on it, and he, he has to, a function to perform, and then everything else follows. What we all talk about function, form, shape, and everything else, material. But when you get to a building of, of this sort of nature, which which is you, it's rare that you have an opportunity to work on something that's as prestigious as a museum or a cultural building, etc. This just happens to be one of them. But I was very fortunate at the beginning of my career to start off with one. So I'm going to start off to try to, to introduce something. Th this building here is, is a neoclassic building. Now, it, it's, it's not <laughs> the, um, uh, it's not the, um, the, the, the medieval museum. But if you look at that building there, you'd say, well, that has form and it has all sorts of things. And it, but that was a competition in 1909. And it was actually realized and built in 1929. It was complete. Now, I only take that as an example because the next competition or the next building that came into it, that's another view of it. This, in fact, is the Botanic Garden in Belfast. And the next view of it is here. <laughs> That's the model. So we always started with a model. This was in the days when we were using slide rules. Believe it or not, I was in Harps at the time. And this was a job that was fortunate enough to uh, be given as a young man. And I realized afterwards the only reason I got it, because it was in Belfast, a lot of troubles, and nobody was volunteering. But anyway, I got the job. And it, it was an absolute gem, and it, 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 it energized me in terms of structural engineering and all the rest of it. But it, it, it is a classic building. If you're ever up in Belfast, you really have to go and see it. Um, so this is all part and parcel of where I'm coming from. That's it. Now, if you look at the side there, you can see this stonework being carried into the brutalist building. It, it, it really is a box, heavy grotesque building as it might have been thought of as such. You know, this, this is going back to the Courbusier and all that sort of stuff. I'll take it on from there. Actually, just a little bit squat. You can't really see it. It's, it's not really coming up as well as I expected it. But that was a great joy to me, and I, I worked on that, and I had to learn an awful lot from that. And um, I'll move on. Oh, Waterford. <laughs> I'm going to Waterford. Waterford is, is in a renaissance now. I just put a little circle around. You see that marker around it. That is known as the um, I'm going to say the Bermuda Triangle. No, it's not. It's the Viking Triangle. Um, it starts over here with Reginald's Tower, and it forms a, a, a triangle around the area of it, onto which there was a vacant s um, site which needed the whole place was in a certain state of um, decay. That's a much better view of it now. You can see where the museum is in clustered in the middle of that cluster of the triangle, which is in fact this. It, it's the it, it's where everything's going to gravitate, and Waterford Waterford is developing in a big way. 
that's cathedral um, by John, designed by John Roberts. He's the only architect to have actually designed two cathedrals in one city. Um, now, if you look at the the, the the building behind there, it is in a little tiny, little narrow spot. So really, one of the challenges on this building wasn't so much design of the building as to how you were going to build it, how you were going to construct it, how you were going to in fact, everything was essential material, whether you were going to have large components, cranage, and all the rest of it. And believe you me, these were all thought out before we even started. At least I thought. Of, because I came from a background of McAlpine and OV Arabs and things like that, I would have a fairly good feeling as to how you build things. But it's all part and parcel of the design, and you're, you're really not constricted. You don't sit on a piece of paper and say, I'm going to do a steel or concrete. You have to look at what you have and, and make it work. Um, uh, the next slide um, is, <laughs> that's water crystal, a new building there. This, because I have to, the reason I've taken this into it is to give a flavor for Waterford. But that may have been the catalyst for the Renaissance because um, the city manager of Waterford, I have to, a lot of admiration for him, he, he in fact um, invited or, or, or encouraged water crystal set back up in, in Waterford, and they did, and it's been very successful. It's also a job we were involved in, which I'm very grateful to be involved in. But it, 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 it is in the centre, and it, it is part and parcel of the whole um, um, visit to Waterford with regard to the hotel and a few other bits and pieces. So moving on, um, I don't want to get too flowery about some of these things. That is the City Hall, and City Hall is, a, is, is, is part and parcel of the... Uh, the, 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 of the um, the, 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 medieval ho um, the medieval museum. In fact, the, the, the back of it is an extension of the museum. And there is a, a reasons for showing all these things. That is the cathedral, which is a wonderful cathedral. That's backing onto it, and you can barely see a little bit of the, the, the museum at the, at the back. That is the site before we started. I'm going to move on a little bit because I have a lot of slides. The notion was that I would, um, I would just uh, use these slides to, to go in, in any direction and prompt me to, to have the conversation. That is the, back, the, the, the gable of the, the um, cathedral there. And that <laughs> lane is known as Flaggy Lane. Not Craggy Lane, but Flaggy Lane. And the new, um, the, uh, new museum is going there. Now, it was a big, you know, we had some dialogue as to what might happen to it. That is the deanery next to it, and th this, this is where the surprises come in. This is what I was, this is the first encounter I had with the museum as to what it was going to be. It was made of the clay model, there it is, can we build it? And of course you look at it and say, oh, okay, um, yeah, well, what you're not realizing that you've got a tiny little nail, you can't really get into the site. So how are you going to build it? What's the best means of building it? And inevitably, I'd have to favor concrete because it's going to be a concrete structure. And also, the idea that there is a big restriction on this building here. There's two big restrictions. One, is space getting into it. Two, you're going to have to imagine this and take, you just go with flow with me for a minute. Imagine that the building, or the perimeters of the building, is a glass box. There are no supports on the perimeter of the building, none at all. And the reason being is that we have a, an arc, a, a, the archaeology suggested that in, under no circumstances are you going to implode on any adjoining buildings, take any loads from them, so we didn't. And also they were going to be exposed as part of the museum, so when you walked into this building you were looking at the surrounding buildings around it. So that made it kind of another little bit of a challenge. But most importantly, Below this museum, there is a 13th century um, undercroft. And it, it, it um, goes back to 1290-something. Um, it incidentally, it, uh, we could talk about that historically a little bit more about it in a minute. But the undercroft was sacrosanct. And we, I worked on that as well with uh, Blue and O'Donoghue on the uh, restoration or the preservation of it. So that was a separate job. And it had, we have to build over it. Um, so consequently, the protection of that was, 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 was absolute. 
that's another view of it. And here we go again. So, having looked at all of that, and having had time to discuss it and talk about it, we had to come up with a model with the constraints that we had to work with. And the constraints being the undercroft, the perimeters, no attachments to the adjoining boundaries, and interestingly, it, 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 <laughs> the next thing is a model of what I, what I assumed what it was going to be. Um, this here is a, a, a linear, we, we'll see more of this in a minute, a, li a linear um, on the crop going through, the, through right through the building. This was the front end of the building, and really restrictions were restrictions. And if, if you imagine, there, this is the ground floor here, and the retaining wall we had to build on the neat, and that is an opening sliding door, so you can literally walk through the building from the front. So the limits are, where, where are we going to find so, so boundaries and supports? And really, there's only four in it. One, two, three, and four. Consequently, how do you build this from the top down? Well, obviously, the first thing you have to do is protect the undercroft. And the undercroft will give it a certain amount of uh, leverage as well with the uh, OPW, etc., etc. They allowed me to put a precast plank over the top of it. And that is it. You, you don't put any more load on it. So the load went over the top of the on the cross so that we could then use it as transport and to get onto the building. Um, and as you see, you see the perimeters there, I've just going to indicate a perimeter. These perimeters there are not switching the, 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 the um, external walls of the existing, of the existing structure. Just, this is, I, I try, try to explain to me, th this is in fact just a longitudinal section through the building before I start. That's the undercroft. There's the, the gable of the uh, cathedral, and there was an archaeological dig along here. This is the perimeter of the back of the building, and this has got to be protected at all costs. So I've just done these little sketches just to give an indication or just clarify a little bit where we are. So there we go. So this is the notion of what we're going to do. First of all, mm -hmm. I've got to protect that, so the precast is going to go over that. Then we're going to build a top slab over here, so we have to keep the props in under the prop, wait for it to actually cure before they can release the props. Because I have to build a wall up here to span over to here, that's going to pick up onto a deep beam that runs longitudinal between two supports of about 20 meters. And deep beams is a lovely thing that engineers love to talk about, but you can rationalize them any way you want to. But if you think put holes into them, it just becomes a truss. And all you have to do is look at it as a truss, and it's simple enough to analyze. So the next bit, that is the, that's a temporary condition. The next slide, or the next bit, is going to show you the building as it stands. So now we have a building that's hung from the wall in the center and a deep beam spanning to and fro with a protected, um, protected undercroft. And, and essentially, that is really the notion of the design of the building. Um, I, I hope graphically that kind of explains how it all sits together. Um, next, oh, now. This is this is um, uh, architect's impression, or, or, or who, um, which, which shows in fact the undercroft, and that is the undercroft on the neat, the basement on the neat there, and you have a tower that was leading down into the undercroft. Uh, oh, and this side of it here, which I haven't mentioned, in fact, is part of the theatre royal, which was a dressing room. We extended the dressing room for the theatre royal, which is a great Victorian, uh, old, um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful theatre in in Waterford. Um, it, um, it, it, it puts on. So, so that, that was it. Now, this building was interesting enough you know, because you'll see in a minute the facade that we put in here had no windows in it. And these guys wanted windows in, in, in a small dressing room, so we couldn't get it. So we filtered the light through. And that's actually an interesting little structure with columns doing little bits and pieces, doing gymnastics to get down to the ground to transfer the loads down to them. But it, it doesn't feature much because. <laughs> Uh, there's not much we can say, we, we keep talking about the museum. Um, that is the basement of the, um, the basement, which is a lower ground floor, and there's a retaining wall that you had to build. 
with, with great a certain amount of difficulty and, and care because we have uh, a 17th, 16th, 18th century cathedral at the end, at the other end of it, and um, we managed to do it without cracking up the cathedral, so that was pretty good too. Um, this here, uh, probably, if you can see where we're trying to go in here again, this is the front of the building, and that is an opening through the building, and it goes right through to the back, which is about 25 metres, from, I think it's a little bit more than that, nearly 29, 30 metres from the top to the front. And that's an open space. So, you, you know, no columns, no columns. But we, we managed to squeeze a column in. You see that, that, that frame up the top? In fact, that was framed by the architect. Having gone through a whole uh, series of no columns or columns, they agreed to give me a column that's 400, 500 square. And when I put it in there, they said, oh no, we'll frame it. So they made it a bit bigger. Which, you know, having, there was a lot of uh, chewing and throwing that. So you can imagine in a design process where you go with this. The next one is, in fact, the ground floor. And, uh, oh, sorry, that's the first floor. This is the first floor that's. That wall at the side, you see the wall here at the back there, there's even penetration through it. That is supporting the, wall, the floor over the top, which is kind of linear beams running front to back, which I think you'll probably see in a minute. Now, this is our, that's our, 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 our drawing of the, um, the, 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 the basement, and this is the crypt going underneath it. And the four points of load, bang, 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 that's where we had to pick all the loads and basically get them down to the ground. No touching of this wall, no touching of the deanery, no touching, except for the back wall we could touch here because this is all new structure. And we had a staircase, a, a, a lift and a staircase on the other side. Um, that is basically to describe how the building's working. Now we're coming up onto the, um, the, the first floor, which again has a glass um, pavement on the outside, which looks down into the crypt, which is quite a nice uh, feature. And again, there's four column supports. And this here is the back of the, what I just showed you earlier, to be the city hall. We're not touching it. And again, this all is against the cantilever over the top of that. Um, which is basically, we'll, we'll come to that and show you, and maybe we can talk about some of the um, reasons why, I mean, the mindset, where do you go with these things? How do you get there? What, what are ideas? How do you share the ideas with the architect? And most of all, how do you get the architect to believe that's his idea in the first place? That's the hard bit. But this, again, is the, what I did is honestly, I'm telling you, um, you, 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 if you're dealing, I don't. Yeah, I'll fix it. Anyway, this is the first floor, and what, what I'm trying to show here is that if you look at these lines here, when you walk into the mu mu museum, you look at a big long linear beam running through there, and you sort of think, well, yeah, okay, it's spanning all that distance. But it's not really, it's actually hung from this wall here. And you probably see there's a bit of a a bit more on the, on the edge. I had a lot of trouble trying to get that corner to extend that there to get enough bars into it to, to hang the slab from. But eventually, you know, there's a puritanical thing about what's pure and what's elegant and what's not. And it's really, it, 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 <laughs> you, you know, by attrition you get there anyway. So that is basically the structure. Now, the the next section is, in fact, showing you a little bit more demonstrating what, what, what we have up there. This is our cross-section through the building. And as you can imagine, if you're out in, out in the pavement looking in, you see straight down. And that is the holy grail of the crypt that we have to protect. So the next bit is going to be a little bit construction showing where we started. Uh, the first dig we had an archaeologist in. Obviously, they cleared all that before we could we we we, we could um, continue. And as you can see, all the perimeter buildings around there, they all remained intact. And the back of the building was featured somewhere at the back there. Um, uh, initially, when, uh, and even when we did the site investigation, in, in, incidentally, we were on we were on we, we didn't know we were actually going to get down to 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 natural ground because 
archaeology being what it is, we don't know whether they're going to let us or not. So we had prepared ourselves maybe for some sort of mini pointing or something like that, and that was all part and parcel of it. But as the job progressed, we actually got down to, to the natural ground, so we didn't need to do any of that stuff. But again, you have to keep all these things in, 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 in going with you before you can get there. And consequently, even when we went to tender, there was a, there was a certain amount of piling taken in with the probability that we might get down to normal ground, which we did because the archaeologists dug straight back to, to, to natural ground. Um, this, is, this is the first, this is the site before we started. There was a little bit of protection to the undercroft and we exposed it. And you can see the little laneway between the, um, the front entrance and the, and the gable of the cathedral. And um, we, we had very little room to, to work for it. Um, so it was always, my, it was always my, my vision that this was all going to be pumped concrete and how they were ever going to get a crane in there, if ever, you know. So we had a mobile crane that came in and came out. And they eventually got a small little crane with a capacity of about a ton that could just do small things that sat in that corner. Um, and that is preparing for the found for for preparing for the for the retaining wall which you have to build before we could do anything. That is when we got down to, to, to natural ground, and that now is the first time in probably I don't know how many, whatever, that, that the um, the other cloth was exposed and you can see. The, the, the stonework at the bottom is not quite as, uh, uh, well, obviously the top is being, um, is being um, uh, um, pointed uh, from time to time, but the bottom had not been. And we have a lot of archaeologists on the site and a lot of containment and a lot of restrictions. Um, but, you know, you get there eventually. Um, that's a little bit more of the, of the undercroft. And now that's the protection. This, this was, in fact, I had a lot of trouble trying to get this to happen because, you know, they said you have to build it, but you can't put anything on, on, on this property. You just simply can't do it. I don't know. Um, but I said, well, okay, fine. But the overburden that I had that was over this undercrop was infinitely more than the weight mass of that concrete. So eventually they let me put this, the, 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 the protect, to in order to protect the. Um, the other ground they allowed me to do this. And as you say, we actually put some block work to raise it up a little bit there. All of this here is lime mortared and all, you know, photographed and drawn and everything else. So that is the big protection. And also it was adequate enough to, to take some reasonable loads across the, the, the site. But that is the only, only, the only um, uh, access to the site. So everything is restricted. Now, going on a little bit here, uh, I, there's just going to be slides, the same thing again, you see it again, and another view looking down on it. And now, th this, is, this, is where, this, is, this, is, this is where everything happens. Everything was pumped, all the concrete was pumped. Which one is that? That must be the, that's a Kratz ground floor. But it, it now it's a foundation, the raft, because we had to do a raft because of the, the various conditions and it was a raft we made in, in the basement. In the basement, uh, because there was little, there's more columns in the basement than there is up in the, on the floor above that. They, they just stop at, at basement level. So that's the pouring of the raft. This, in fact, is the first floor, um, which, is, which, is, which is an overhang from, there's, a, there's a various overhangs. There's one cantilever, the, cant the sides of the building are cantilevering in two directions. But this is the linear um, columns that I, or beams that I talked about that are going to be hung from the well, from the next pour over, which we might see a little bit there. That that's the, the linear beam with the with ready to go, hung from the columns over. A view from the back, looking at the building. Um, That is, is again, is the um, ground floor with the columns. That is the ground floor with, 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 the, with the preparing. That's the back of the section. And this is the only support we have in the building here and another one over here. I don't know if I'm indicating it, but that was, in fact, to be the column line there. But the architect decided to box frame it for some reason. I ended up more than I expected. So over here and over here and two fronts is the main support of the building. Um, 
this is the building development. So all of us now, now we're seeing, you, 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 you can write, this is, this is it during the construction, this in fact is stonework. The stonework is quite remarkable. I mean, to be honest with you, it really is gobsmacking. It, it's done, it was actually, um, 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 uh, the stone is a, a, is a dundrate stone. The stone is the original, same, came from the same quarry in, in, in Bristol as the, um, the Undercroft decorative finishes, which we'll see in a minute. It's the same stone. Um, the, the company that did it uh, was McDonald's and so on, they won, an, I think they won the reward for that building, they won all sorts of awards for the particular stonework, amazing piece of stonework, um, parametric design and then auto automatically cut on their, um, it, 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 up in Antrim, which is it, it's quite, a, and if, incidentally they also won the um, award for the um, Giants Causeway. So they're a terrific company and uh, capable of that. But ultimately, um, when, when I designed the front building for that, I have to say, you know, I, we, uh, we, we made an allowance of about 100 mils of um, stonework. When this came out, it came out in chunks like that. I mean, it really did, and had a state of work. But however, we had a little bit in reserve to be able to, to do all of that. That is actually um, hung from a steel frame, um, which, which linearly transposed onto the back of that section, every section behind that is flat. So you imagine something curved like that, it might be that thick of one piece and thick of that side. And it's, it's amazingly done, but it, it's a super, super, super finish. Um, what else have we got? Now, it, it, it got, it, it, this is an interesting, this only hit me recently, and, and it was mentioned before that this evoked Somebody said, uh, a clinker, a, a Viking ship. And I thought, okay. We actually have a Viking ship in Waterford, which, was, which, which, which was, was built in Waterford, and it's sitting outside the um, Reginald's Tower. And as a comparison for that, um, I mean, I'm going to go into romantics about this, but I think, you know, not only engineering, but I mean, you know, engineers have sold as well as architects. So um, what I found fascinating that this 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 particular one has been shown everywhere. I think if you Google it, you'll find it. It's it, 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 it's it's a it's it's a free copy and it's it's on computer. You'll find it everywhere. But it it, it obviously makes it look quite dramatic. But it is quite dramatic. I mean, actually, you come in there and one night you're walking through that thing, and you, you you just come around a corner and suddenly that's in front of you. you say, Jesus, where did that come from? But it it, it it's surprising. Um, now, we're, this is kind of this is the gable end of the same building. That in the back of that section there is in fact um, the, um, the the dressing room for the Theatre Royal. So uh, there's no windows in it, but there is a lantern coming through with light filtering down uh, through the build through the building. That's it again. Now I'm going to talk a bit a little bit about that. Um, carving there because that is quite unique. That was found in another excavation by one of the archaeologists, Orda Scully, um, during a dig sometime in the early 90s. And it is a buckle of a belt that's believed to be in the buckle of a knight of whatever, of Norman knights. And uh, I, w I, I don't know much about the history other than it's supposed to be root of the Old Testament. Now, whether, uh, the video, I, I don't know which one. But what, what I would say about that is um, the, um, the sculptor of, the, of that one there is um, <laughs> quite a famous word, Jesus, where is he now? He, um, oh, Stephen Burke. Stephen Burke is well, if you're familiar with anybody, he apparently is quite a familiar s sculptor. That was actually sculpted on site. That did not come made up. I, and I'll show you in a minute him at work on that one. Um, but again, that's a piece of stunning work. There he is there. That's Stephen now. Stephen there, chiseling away there, coming up with that. And it's absolutely amazing that, 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 that uh, you know, what he's just done there. That's a garden, a back section of the reflective 
um, 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 rear of the museum, which is actually in contrast very good, and it looks terrific in the garden with regard to all the rest of it. It meets, it, 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 it's, it's spot on, to be honest with you. As um, a collaborative uh, engineer, I like to think we are collaborative in that, that we have offer more to, 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 to buildings than just the functionality of putting steel and concrete together and doing the analysis and just d producing bending schedules. Uh, we, if we, I'm lucky enough I'm around long enough to, I think it can give some freedom to architects, etc., and other designers to, to express themselves better <laughs> and to encourage them to do things. Because at the end of the day, it's nice to do a decent building, and we, 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 the, I hope that every building we do is decent, but, but every now and then there's, there's one that's reasonably good. And this one here, again, collaboratively working with the architect and what his expectations are with regard to finishes, even though we did set them, we said go concrete, go concrete, go concrete, we did. And all of the um, conduits and everything else is all concealed behind the concrete. Um, but the expectations of finishes from architects is, is quite considerable. And one of the things you don't want to do, Joseph, uh, the, the particularly our own institution up in, 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 in London, yeah. we have a fair face concrete. And it's the best fair face concrete I've ever seen. That's on the side of the stairs, I do. Yeah, but yeah. you know, you can't promise that to anybody else. Yeah. And, and this is why when we got sample panels in, and I had them made, I made sure, hang on guys, take the contractor, so you produce exactly what you can produce, but don't come up and give us something that you can never produce again, because we're going to get loggerheads all the way through the job. The second round of that went on with this, because the expectations were so high. And I did say, I, in, in fact, even Sahir Dean and all those people, they don't leave their concrete finished, they actually wash them down with some lime and do all sorts of things and rub them down, and it, it's impossible to get it, unless you've got pots of money, and even your Tade, was it Tade Lando, who's the great uh, architect of Fairface Concrete, you better look at his finishes, they're not that great either, but you know, all you see is one or two great ones, so we did succeed, I, Tom O'Brien was a contractor, and I'll take hats off to him for his patience, we did get, we did actually succeed in getting pretty good finishes. This here, there's two audiovisual rooms in it, in, in the museum, and, and they're pretty good, and it's, it's concrete. Again, the, the theme is concrete and oak, and I mean, how, how organic can you get? You can't get much more than that, and it's consistent with the period of the undercroft. And you'll see a little bit more of the undercroft in a minute. Okay, that's the construction going on. You can see the linear beams going in, and there, <laughs> the crane, that, that's the best you could do with that. That crane, uh, as an extension, probably had less than a ton capacity. But in, in, in concert, the two of them working together quite nicely. Now, <laughs> this is the interesting thing. This, this, is, this was built in, that ship was built in, in, in Waterford. This was actually made in Waterford. And one of the best jobs I ever did, I'll be honest with you, see that gable of that building? I don't know if he's familiar with Waterford. But there was the most godly, awful building in front of that, built in the 60s. And it was a pleasure to, to have had, they demolished it. And we demolished it, and, and that was the gable remaining, so they planted that um, um, Viking boat, which was made of, it, 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 it made in water about 15 years ago. I don't know if you, I suppose if you're watching Nationwide, water was getting a lot of, um, Pub, uh, publicity at the moment, particularly with the winter valley. It's a nice place to go at the moment. There's a lot happening. Um, now, I would say that, but anyway, this is the bit I like. That, I took that photograph only Monday, I think. What day is today? Tuesday. Yeah, I took that photograph yesterday because it suddenly occurred to me this is the museum. <laughs> and when you compare that with the ribs and, 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 the, and the thing, There you go. Now, there, that's the connection I made at the weekend. And I literally took, I'll go back, I know I can go back to that photograph. But that one of the ship was actually taken yesterday. There they are. Now, isn't that, who 
got the idea. I don't know where this idea came from, but is it, is it coincidental or is it just the fact that somebody saw this and saw that and put them together, or is it an accident? If it is, serendipity. Um, now we're getting into the undercrop. Um, if you look at the undercrop, you see the dressing and all the decorative work and all the rest of it. That is the, um, the original stone, that's Dundry stone, D-U-N-D-R-Y. Bristol, um, 13th century, whatever. Um, it's reputed, not reputed, but it's a fact, apparently. Just <laughs> bullying Waterford again. I'm, I'm told that Waterford is the third oldest city in Europe, believe it or not, older than Dublin. Celebrated its 1100th anniversary last year. Viking city in uh, 914. Um, come the, 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 the Norman invasion, Mr. Strongbow, which you're all familiar with, came down with uh, married Aoife in the cathedral era in Waterford, which you all may have historically heard about. But apparently at one stage, Mr. Um, Strongbow got a little bit avaricious and got a little bit taken, getting carried away himself. And uh, Henry II then came over to Ireland. And this is where he ended up in this area here, in this building, in fact. Um, he's the same Henry that um, Thomas of Beckett had a little bit of a falling out with. Um, so he was the first um, monarch to visit Ireland, and he arrived in Waterford. Um, now, it's a nice clear view. You, if you look in the back of the building and looking out, you're actually seeing, as you can see, you're looking right through the, to the outside. And to be honest with you, that box frame there, fine, they did it. But this is the bit I needed, that bit. This bit I could have done, but anyway, I took it once I got it. But that's where it was focused. This, in fact, is the entrance into it. And this is the rear of the city hall, which we, we'll see in a minute. Um, that is uh, the column and the arched feature over the, it, it may be that the top, the top bottom section is authentic and so is the arch, but some of the other stuff is probably latter. And again, it's pretty nice and it's nice and cool in there. The, the temperature in there is, is generally kept around. For some reason, it's, not, it's very comfortable, about 14 degrees and stays at that. It never changes, but it, it, it's, it's really, it, they just leave it at that and it's just terrific. Um, th that's just a capture of a little bit I like, which is the oak and the, the, the board mark concrete. Um, of course, I would be in favour of concrete. No, no I, I, like, I'm, I don't mind going ever in any direction, steel, concrete. Whatever is applicable. If it's elegant, it's elegant. It's going to work. And connections and how things fit together is, is terribly important. But in this instance, because of the geometry of the building, there's no way that you, everything was, no, you don't have grid lines, you don't have anything else. We just coordinate everything, and we give coordinates for everything, and it's all set out in that way. And the most elegant of form in, in terms of connections in that form is concrete. There's no blemishes. You just marry them together, and you mesh them together, and uh, you hope it behaves in the manner in which you designed it. So there's a little bit more of that. Yeah, we had a lot of other things. We had services in the site, ESB, and a whole lot of things to contend with. But OK. These are little things that, it, that you, you, you know, you might not think would. These are your columns going up to the top. You see the heads of the window, the, the, the window wasted up there, the column is wasted up the top of the, the, the thing. I mean, the reason that's there. And, and, and it really was annoying because we had to reduce it up to nothing almost to pick up the thing. The reason was there because the transit beams up the top have slots in them. And the idea we were going to have um, folding blinds going up and down. So in order to accommodate all the blinds, you had to go do all these somersaults here to make those connections. And that's all right. You just have to get on with it. That's fine. But it's just idiosyncrasies that, that somebody has. And their rationale and my rationale are not the same, but we have to do it. But it seems <laughs> of no consequence, but it was a pain, I promise you. This is the latter end of the building. Th this, in fact, is actually about, a, I think it's 15th century, and it was wine vault. It was added to the end of, of the deanery here. And if you look at it there, the ceiling of it is a water. 
and they obviously put they wattled up and then they they lined it all up and then eventually built up a um, a, 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 a an arch around it and consequently the deanery then was built over that which was um, served the cathedral beside it but again all that's available and it's, it's quite a nice visit that's another view that's more of the uh, audiovisual just as I said there's one stacked on top of the other and it's it's quite informative and pretty good a little bit more of the finish is there you've got a um, an oak floor. Oh, I didn't know it was a pointer here. <laughs> Great. <laughs> here we go. Um, the, the back of the undercroft, and here we have a smooth face of concrete. And just to show that it's not all perfect, and, and it shouldn't be, I mean, that is going to happen. I, I, if, you know, you, you can't condemn it after, you know. <laughs> this thing was only done on a, on a small budget, it was less than five million, which is quite a remarkable thing. So, but Okay, <sighs> trying to convince the architect, look, what are you going to do? Are you going to take it down, start all over again? It, 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 you have to reel. It is concrete, you know? <laughs> and, and you take it all over. At, at this stage, when you walk into the place, you don't notice that. Because it all just, it just, it just ca catches you all. It's not one, you don't concentrate in one spot. You see everything. Now, again, I'm, it's getting a little bit tiresome now, but... Um, you say, that was unnecessary. That was certainly unnecessary there, and I think maybe it's a shame that that's there hiding up the back because it was, it could have been just down here like that, and that would have been I could have dealt out with it in that manner. Um, what am I going to say next? So just a few more views of the, the, the building, and 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 again, uh, that's a lovely room. That's that's that is in fact a two-story high, high ceiling vaulted area. And uh, they have little um, recital things and like that, and music and, and talks. And um, they also do a thing called um, what's it? Uh, oh, I don't know. Um, history, but history by the whatever. Uh, it's a small thing. That's if you anybody knows Waterford. That that is um, Luke Wadding, who was an academic in the 15th century, well known to the Pope at the time, and all the rest of it. Um, again, this is more of the um, undercroft, more of the linear beams I talked about, more of the stuff. This is kind of half interesting here. That is, in fact, the glass pavement, and you can see down into the undercroft. And it's quite nice walking through there. It, 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 as, it's get, as again, when I say it's a surprise, it is a surprise. Um, In fact, that is in fact the um, just here is the gable or, or the back of the um, city hall, and the only load that we took onto it was in fact the lantern sitting on the, 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 the sitting on the um, the parapet up the top. This tower here, interestingly enough, I found another photograph of the next one, which was obviously very very old. Here it is here. And you see the gable and the bits and pieces. So it's remarkable that something that was upstanding over the ground that has lasted so long, and for some reason nobody took the, took the, didn't decide. Well, we'll take a few stones out of this and we'll build something out of it. Because that's usually what happens to to any piece of stonework that's featured. But anyway, it remained. The reason I'm showing this here is that this is just a typical section through it, and just to demonstrate, if you look at all those notes up there, don't touch the building. So that just made it a little bit more interesting in the design of it. Now, I, I, I probably whipped through it rather f quickly, and um, I would have slowed down, but anyway. But this is kind of interesting. And just to demonstrate that it is, in fact, what we said it is, uh, the corners of the top of it is projecting out over the, uh, 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 through one of the sides. And that is a feature where we just did not take any load on it. Everything is taken from uh, perimeter cantilevers. And I don't know what else I have. I don't know if Oh, I don't know what I should show this one here. This is health and safety. Uh, this is, in fact, Paddy Lawson. Paddy Lawson was it really the engine architect who designed the, 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 the Ulster Museum. And I had a great rapport with him, and I, I enjoyed him immensely. 
And I think this was with the two of us doing a, a site, site a, a survey, and we're walking around the power pit of the building, and that's what we used to do. But obviously, we can't do those things anymore, and rightly so. However, um, I, that's as a man that, um, but apparently Francis Pym actually designed, th there was a competition for the Ulster Museum. Francis Pym, Paddy Lawson, went to Francis Pym and said, I'd love to go to competition. And Francis Pym said, Brad. and then they went to Arabs, and Arabs said, yeah, okay, go off you go. And I worked entirely Paddy to a job, and then they ended up and they got the job. But I, I kind of look, I'm very fond of the man. I had great noise with him. He could play the banjo as well. And we were very young. <laughs> oh, that's Rupert Maddock architect. Um, that is Amy McEnany, who is the director of the curator of the, of who, who created the actual uh, job in terms of what he needed and what he was, and he was absolutely adamant of what he did need, and he's a great guy. In fact, he met the Queen when she was over. We have a, a charter, of a, a, a very famous piece of um, 13th century charter or whatever, and uh, it was present. He, he showed it to the Queen, so he met the Queen there. And of course, that's um, Casey bit of rope, but a great builder, a great, great, great guy. Um, I don't think I really have much more to say. I, I, I think actually that was the happy days when we we got the award for the um, National Trust, and that's it really. Um, whether it's a technical, I, I really didn't know which way to go on this one. And I suppose um, I'm as much interested in, in how things are built and where ideas come from. And as an engineer, how you explore ideas. And when I get a blank piece of paper in my hand, I still have a pencil and paper. And um, I'm passionate about engineering and I love it. And I hope that was a little summary of the building I have more. And if you're ever down there, do visit. Thank you very much.